Hey, hey, insight number three. So for the last three of this week, I kind of wanted to cover the three instances that arise, um, although there are some very important points. Um, and the one that I did miss out and I thought was very important, but I'll try and weave it in anyway. Um, but yeah, so these these but same scriptures, but part one, part two, and part three. So this is part one. So the scriptures are Exodus 15, 23 to 26. And this is where we see the waters of Marah are poisoned and they can't drink them. So here's water that they can't drink and they're complaining and they're like, what, you just led us out here to die? And, you know, you kind of want to go, did you just forget the Red Sea thing? Like, you know, you... yeah. So, yeah. Um, and Moses, I don't know, puts a tree in there. Like, commands a tree to go in there, a tree goes in there, somehow cleanses the water, magic tree, yay, water's good to drink. Um, so, yeah, uh, and then 16, 1 to 15 is the manna from heaven, where they pray, like, we're really hungry, what are you going to do? Like, you just, you know, you, you again, you Moses, you led us out here to die, was this your plan all along? And as my husband pointed out last night, I found that very interesting, he said, I, he, said he doubted that the whole 600,000 of them were saying this, and I wouldn't quite believe him. And he said, I bet it was an older group of people who were just like, eh, they, want that. they wanted to go back to Egypt into slavery because that was better than being free and a little thirsty or like worried about that. Here's Christ who's just performed all these miracles and yet they still don't quite get it. And this is why they had to travel in the wilderness for 40 years. They wandered around in circles for 40 years because they had to wait for those negatory things, those ugly things to pass so that they could then enter that promised land. So it's a bit sad. But anyway, um, they had to learn that. So, you know, let's take a lesson from that. They had took 40 years. Let's take less than 40 years, right? Let's take the shortest amount of time we can. So how can we use these accounts to help us and others who have unmet physical or spiritual needs? Because that's what it was. Oh, the last one, by the way, is water again, when they're thirsty again, and, and Moses causes, um, strikes the rock with a staff and causes water to come out of it so they don't go thirsty. Um, and then they go and camp where there's wells and trees and they're all happy. And then there's a battle, um, which I didn't quite cover, but I'll try and fit that in the last one. There we go. All right. So how can we use these accounts in 15, 23 to 26? 16, 1 to 15, and 17, 1 to 7, okay? So same scriptures for these last three, part, part 1, 2, and 3. So this is part 1, question 1. How can we use these accounts to help us and others who have unmet physical or spiritual needs? Because this is what it was for them. They had both unmet physical and spiritual needs. They didn't see how they could deal with anything. Um, now, my husband and I problem solvers, we would have been digging around for water. We would have been like, okay, what else can we do? Um, but, you know, really all they needed to do was pray about it and ask Moses nicely, Moses, we're really thirsty. Is there a way you can make these waters better so we can drink? Or is there a way that you could ask God to provide food for us? But no, they went in all whinging and complaining. So the Israelites here quickly for, um, forget the God, or the good, sorry, <laughs> looks the same. So the Israelites here quickly forget the good and see only their immediate need. Um, telling Moses over and over, you led us out here to die. Complaining was rife. They felt empty and without. You may know someone who is like this, or even see yourself here. It's again having that relationship with Christ, trusting he will provide if you will but ask. Remember his miracles. Ask for deliverances, and great and small. Ask for deliverances. And that's what I'm saying, like, I don't think all 600,000 plus of these people would be doing this, but there was definitely a group that was contentious and whingy and whiny, and the rest of them were just scared, I think. So, President Iring, though, he said, you are being nourished and comforted by a loving saviour who knows how to succor you in whatever tests you face. So he's got you on this. Don't worry about it. He's got you. But you need to ask. You need to try and um, problem solve for yourself. Remember, bring them in at the beginning, try and problem solve and have them guide you during that problem solving. And this can go on for years. It could just be five minutes. It doesn't matter. He will deliver you both in little things and big things and everything in between. It's all good. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about the complaining and, and stuff more in the next one. Um, so it's not so short, but yeah, I just wanted to sort of think about that. How can we actually help these people with these unmet physical and spiritual needs? Because that's what it is. And, so, and often it is us. 
and it might only be a little unmet need, but it's still our needs are not being met. So maybe we need to look at what we can do to help meet those needs, what we can help others do meet those needs. It's about being more self-sufficient and having that relationship with Christ. So if we can build on that or help others see that if they build on that, things will get better, then that's what we need to do. If you have any other suggestions, fire ahead because I'd love to hear them too. All right, I'll see you for the next one.